Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Up Your Alley. It's a podcast with two best friends. That's me. My name is Taylor Edgar, and with me as always is my best friend Jake Baggett. Say hi, Jake. Hey, buddy. We recommend things to each other, and we come back the next week to grade them between one and three, depending on how much is up our individual alleys. Uh, after Jake's poor performance <laughs> last week, I am still holding on to my lead. 55 points to Jake's 54. That I'm might change close. every day. You're just inching up. <laughs> That might change after this week, though, uh, when we're talking about my recommendation for Jake, which was the 2021 documentary by Eli Roth Finn, available to watch on Max. And also available to watch on Max is Jake's recommendation for me, which is the series How To with John Wilson. Comedy docuseries Double Docs this week. Yeah. Double Doc Week. Yeah, I guess How To is a documentary. Yeah. It is. I guess I would call it that. No, everyone would because that's what it is. That doesn't feel. What are you doing right with your stupid flip phone? I have to think of the name of the thing that I'm going to recommend you. Okay, that's like an hour from now. I so know, just but give I, it time. I'm going to forget. God damn it! I'm going to so, see. But I know what I want to give you. I just can't remember the name, but I know what it is. Good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll explain it. I'll describe it, and then have you find out what I'm talking about. Oh, you mean about. like how conversations work? Yeah. All right. We'll figure it out. It'll be fun. We'll do it together. We'll use our voices. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks uh, for subscribing to us on uh, Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. If you could leave a review, that's awesome. Tell some friends about the show. We appreciate that, too. And for new listeners, uh, on our TikTok, you can follow us on TikTok, too. Yeah. TikTok, too. TikTok, too. I was so anti-TikTok for so long. Yeah. Just I was just like, no, yeah. I'm not going to do TikTok. It's uh, it feels like a media that it's, passed me by. It's incredibly user friendly, and it's our most popular way for people to see us. <laughs> That's so, fantastic. If I'm, you're listening, China, and I know you are, I was wrong about your TikTok. It's fantastic, but I'm only putting up uh, professional stuff because I know I would just suck my life away if I <laughs> did it for real. Bring back musically. <clears throat> I, just, I want to lip sync to music. Oh God, I remember that. I want to lip sync to Jack Skellington singing christmas songs <laughs> fair enough thank you yeah i i get sucked into things too quickly i was just uh, before you got here i was upstairs watching the newest uh summoning salts yeah have you, have you watched the new one i haven't seen the new one yet it's about ninja gaiden 2 oh sick that and, game is terrible well it's the guy that had the <laughs> world record but it's hard if you don't know uh summoning salts does a series of uh speed run video game history form documentaries yeah. like history of you know mario kart to Super Mario 3, everyone, like, classic games and speedrunners that uh, yeah. set the world records. The newest one's on Ninja Gaiden 2 for the NES, and it's so hard to take it seriously because they're just, like, you know, doing, oh, you save two frames here by using this exploit, and it's yeah. a really well-made documentary, yeah. but it's all about people trying to break the guy that has the world record, and the guy's name is Jimmy Poopins, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just stupid video game stuff, so it's like, good job, Poopins. <laughs> we don't know if anyone will ever be able to break the uh, high pace set by Jimmy Poopins. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Poopins. <laughs> it, it sucks that there are some people that could never break his record. It's like, fucking Jimmy Poopins. I don't know how he's so, so great. Shout out Jimmy Poopins. That's a good name. Speaking of video games, though, uh, you've been playing a little Armored Core. We've both taken a step yes, away from uh, Red Dead. I'm playing on both at the same time because uh, Armored Core is a very fun game, but it's extremely frustrating. This is Armored Core 6, you're on. Yes. Yeah. So I would play it until I'm very frustrated and stop and go back to Red Dead where I can just cowboy around for a little bit and it's a feel big, a lot better. Big mech game, right? I've yeah. Never, I haven't played any of the Armored Cores. They're great. Yeah. Sell me on it. It's uh, Is it Gundam Wing Simulator? I don't know Gundam Wing. Sell me on it. <laughs> anime mechs? So it's not anime, okay. but it is mechs. Huh. And you choose your right-hand gun, your left-hand gun, your shoulder guns, your head, your body, your arms, and your legs. You have to mix and match to find the stuff that you like, whether you want to be... Well, you got to change your assembly for what mission you're going into, because sometimes it'll be smarter to be a big tank to take all the damage. Sometimes it'll be smart to be really fast mm. and get around all the damage. So you got to build it up right, and it feels really good when you're playing it. Once you get used to how to boost around and swinging your sword at things and shooting all your rockets off at once and killing everything around you, it feels really good is it easy to pick up or like do you have to have like a history with those type of games it's one of those things it? easy to start a lifetime <clears throat> to master because i will say i picked thing. up I, not that i'm great at it but i feel like i picked up diablo 4 pretty quickly not yeah. playing any other diablo i think you'll pick it up really well huh. yeah it's well, like you never played dark souls right so I mean, i've played souls like games but i've yeah. never played dark souls dark souls so it's got that type of control scheme idea to it okay a lot so, of pairing and 
whatnot? Well, there's parry, but I don't use it. It's basically a shield. Fucking bad. And when you over open here. your shield uh, quickly, oh, like uh, it takes more damage off of you. Like God of War, how you just have that quick shield where you yeah. just throw it up for a second. Yeah, but yeah. the shields they still get damage through them, so I don't use them. Huh. Maybe there's one that doesn't, but right now, no. Right now, I have a big missile launcher on my right hand, a small missile launcher on my left hand. That's smart. A big missile launcher on my left shoulder, like blast toys. Like almost no, my right shoulder is like blast toys because that one's pointing forward. This one shoots vertically up and then rains down missiles. Like a mortar. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. It was pretty great. Yeah, it intricate. works out so well because it takes a couple seconds and you see somebody setting up and they're about to shoot you with a big gun and then ten little mortars missiles pop down. pop down on them. That's right. And you're like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, I, it was fun to like tinker around with Diablo. So maybe that's something I would like. I I had. To, I think you actually would like it. Yeah, it was something that I was going to. Uh, recommend, recommend on this podcast, but I think I have another one cooking nice. that I think would be good for us. I was, uh, I'm still trying to platinum Red Dead, but I was doing, so I had to stop playing one night. I was in a real mood where I was just, I finally unlocked the whole map in the mm. story. Yeah. So I'm like, nice, now I can get all this, collect this, shoot these things, you know, because only animals and flowers are in certain parts of the game. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm like, nice. To do one of the, uh, outfits that i think it's the master hunter or expert yeah. hunter outfit yeah one of the things you have to tick off is kill a cougar with a stick of dynamite yeah yeah so i'm up behind the manzanita post mm-hmm. up in the woods and it's nighttime and i'm up there picking all the flowers and i see a cougar in the woods <laughs> yeah. and i'm like oh this is perfect cougar hasn't seen me yet i'm gonna throw dynamite at the cougar yeah so i line it up everything's great big explosion my honor drops 50 points, and I blew up a dog. <laughs> and I felt legit intense, real emotional shame about it. Yeah, that sure. I had to stop the game. You had Western madness. You yeah. just saw a four-legged animal, and you're like, that's a damn cougar. <laughs> it's, it's like, like people crazy. that... And you go over, and it's a dog named Butch. It's like seeing Driftwood as Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. But I was just going being, insane about yeah. it. I was like, I'm finally going to blow up this cougar. Yeah. And it's just someone's German Shepherd that I just exploded. <laughs> And I was just like, all right, I'm going to revert to my last save. But before I did that, I would stop playing it. So I found a new game on the PlayStation Plus, uh-huh. which I had heard some people recommend. I had never played anyone in the series, kind of like Armored Core, Armored Core 6. Uh-huh. So I jumped into Sniper Elite 5. Okay, yeah. Have you played any of the Sniper Elite games? Uh, I've played uh, 2, 3, and 4. So 5, I, I had no frame of reference for this game other than hearing mm-hmm. some people say it's a fun game. Yeah. Uh, four it, was my favorite. I think. Was, it, well, have they all been World War Two? Yes. Okay. So this is World War Two in France. Yes. Oh, okay. Then I did play five. Okay. There you start go. out in a submarine. Oh, then right I did the, not play five. I mean, okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> I had no frame of reference for what this game really was, or like how it played. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to think of what I would do, and I found out there's a perfect analogy for what the Sniper Elite Five is. Mm-hmm. You remember? when i forget which call of duty it was i think it was call of duty world at war where they started doing call of duty but with zombies yeah 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 yeah. so they just threw zombies into that cod zombies i can't remember when it started either i think it was world at war it was one of the playstation 3 ones maybe yeah so this is the last of us but nazis the last of us yeah it's the same thing like you're sneaking around you can listen you through can walls sell me on this one bud you're like can listen uh, through walls you, okay. there's different okay. ways to go about things you could like throw bottles and distract people but instead of there being zombies there's nazis so there's a uh i, I don't know if it's a standalone game but there is a sniper elite that is nazi zombies i'm sure everyone's got zombies now. yeah that was a whole thing for a nazi while. zombies but it's this game is it got me so jazzed up it's like my favorite everyone's dad got to write a video game because like the protagonist has this super gruff voice yeah of like, course at, at one point you you know to show you how to do things it's like the tutorial mission you can climb up a wall and there's a nazi at the top like talking german and stuff yeah and of it, course. it gives you the prompt like oh you can kill him so you just reach up and you stab him mm-hmm. pull him down and the guy's like see you around hans <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, no. Like, we no. gotta sneak past all these Nazis. <laughs> it's so so funnily written. The first the first shot you take, you have to shoot out uh searchlights that are on the shore of France. Yeah. You're on a submarine. And I'm trying to line up the shot, but it, it gives you like the red uh aiming thing. Yeah, it gives you, you the little shot. reticle while you're uh taking your breath out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That show you where your bullet would actually drop. Exactly. Mm. 
So it went red. I'm aiming at a light, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm going to hit this dude. Fire, and it goes immediately to like the bullet time, the great zoom. Yeah, and then, following uh, it, the bullet. Yeah, it does mm-hmm. like x-ray to show you the damage to the body. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that looks a little bit low. Oh, mm-hmm. that's real low. And yeah. then it goes to x-ray, and you could just see two testicles yes. in x-ray mode. Yeah. And it Explode. shoots a load. Dude. And yeah. I was just like, oh, my God. And then it gave me a ward. It just said testicle shot. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. they built this Points. into the game. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun. There's, um, I don't know which sniper elite it was, but I knew I loved this game because there is a mission where you have to kill Hitler. Of course. And the way he's... He's down in the courtyard, dashing between jeeps, <laughs> and you're just trying to get a beat on him. <laughs> so he's like one of those slippery duck, Hitler, one of those ducks at the county yeah. fair that keeps going back and it's forth. Like whack a mole with Hitler, <laughs> and I was like, "This is great." I'm getting so frustrated trying to I'll shoot like, this guy. Like I have no, I'm not going to sit down and play this game a lot. It's a nice little distraction. I also downloaded one of the newer uh, Tomb Raiders because oh, yeah? I've never played those. I like the first one, but then. I started the second one. I didn't like the direction that they were going, so I just didn't keep going. I think it's the second one that I'm doing because it starts out just like the second Uncharted game where you're in the cold. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I might have seen a Twitch or something about it. Yeah. I mean, it seems fun. That first Tomb Raider in the trilogy, they were like, you know, we're restarting. Yeah. You know, and I was like, cool. And the game was great. And I was like, that's happy. Can't wait for the next one. And then they're like, okay, it's a a prequel. And I was like, that doesn't work for me. Like, you, you already established what a great character she is, and I would like to see her progress from there. And they're like, no, wait, I don't want to do that. Yeah. We're going to show you something else. They really uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 to you. Yes. <laughs> I don't like prequels. Apparently not. <laughs> but yeah, so I love Red Dead Redemption 2. That's, that's a lie. Sniper Elite it. is just a fun little distraction game. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And if I love I, if that I get game, a chance, too. If I get a chance to shoot Hitler in the dick... I'm yeah. shooting him right in his dick. You take it. <laughs> I'm going to probably make a save state right before you get to shoot Hitler, and then just try to shoot Hitler in as many ways as possible. I don't know any patriotic America American that would see you beating Hitler's testicles in your scope and not say, take the shot. Exactly. <laughs> not just any patriotic American. I think just most people. <laughs> most in fact, people. if you're not stoked about shooting Hitler, it's not great. Even Hitler got to shoot Particularly Hitler. Particularly testicle shots. Yeah. Because if they were just, like, just watch him, see what his movements are like, and then you just, like, I got a perfect shot of his dick. <laughs> like, like, this is a clear, this a clear headshot, and then <laughs> yeah. he's just, like, aim the rifle down. It's like, yeah, I know it's a clear headshot, but <laughs> take the shot. <laughs> when am I going to have a chance to shoot Hitler with a dick again? <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's get into what we're going to be talking about this week. Uh, the first thing is my recommendation for Jake. Yes, sir. Which is the 2021 documentary film Finn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recommended this to Jake. It popped up uh, through... Eli Roth, the director, who I know, like I, I think I've seen Hostel. Yeah, I know he did a remake of Cabin Fever, or no, Cabin Fever was him. Cabin Fever was him. Yeah, and he was in Inglorious Bastards. But you know me, I'm not yeah. a horror movie guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't seen him much. But he was on a podcast, the Tim Dillon Show, uh-huh. and talking about this documentary. I had no knowledge this coming out. It's one of those things I think that got lost in the shuffle of COVID. It was 2021. Okay. So, like, a lot of things came out that I just missed. And a shark documentary would be one of those things, obviously. Yeah. But hearing him talk about it, I was like, oh, this Eli Roth guy, like, he, there's something interesting about a lot of horror directors that they're just incredibly weird, but in a good way people. He's incredibly charismatic, they, too. Yeah, they so just it's have really a, nice to listen to the weird stuff that he's said. And that comes say. off on this, because he's yeah. in this, you know? Uh-huh. Uh but it's just one of those things where his uh, way, and I talked about this when I recommended it last week, the way he shot this documentary, the documentary, by the way, it's a, uh, it's about the shark trade. It's about yeah. people illegally, well, sadly, not illegally, but yeah. fishing sharks but, and yeah. the ramifications worldwide for, I would say immorally, <clears throat> definitely immorally. Yeah. Um, but it big goes, old shark trade. What I thought about this going into this, and you tell me if you had this pre- presupposition as well. Uh, was that shark fishing was going to China and it was just shark fin soup? Yes, that was the thing. That's, and I think Eli. The Roth reason I knew about you, this was Yao Ming talked about it when I was a kid. Yeah, being he's like shark fin soup. Yeah, that's terrible. And I was like, I believe Yao Ming. And I think the good thing that you go into this documentary thinking that is that's where it starts off too. Mm. It really, um, yeah, that's true. Uh-huh. Leads you in, and we start with shark fin soup, to you and then they're is, like, it, "There's a lot more to this than." Yeah. That. So it, it really does let you go down this rabbit hole. And I think 
it's interesting seeing Eli Roth. It's kind of like what we talked about last week with um, Joe DeRosa, like doing Salsa Windfall, a comedian doing music. It's mm-hmm. good seeing someone do something that's similar to what they do in yeah. a performance base, but in a different genre. Sure. And seeing a horror director who literally, I mean, movies like Hostel, mm-hmm. he's, you know, sketches out. I want to see this. I want to see the chainsaw go here. I want to see this cut off and blood shoots out like this and all that. Yeah. And finding a way to shoot real life mm-hmm. and making it feel, because I don't know if you got the same vibe I did off this documentary. I was tense yeah. during a lot of it. And a lot of it was some of the most disturbing footage. Yeah. I was disturbed. I was grossed out. No human gets yeah. harmed. And I've, you know, in my it's profession. It's incredible and in my, that they didn't censor the yeah, stuff. They, I hate it that HBO, they don't baby. censor it just because it's a fish yeah if it was oh. anything else yeah <laughs> it's, well and I've, you would I've, show a monkey being cut up like no. that I, I've, I've seen videos of you know like uh butcher shops and i have no uh hang-ups well i have some hang-ups but i have no illusions about where oh, the no. food that i eat comes from i have no illusions either i've seen those videos and yeah i fucking hate myself <laughs> right but even this was one of those things where you could think like i saw some, what was that fucking what is someone Someone in our area has, mm. uh, like, well, all over this area and all over the country, actually, there's, like, uh, big coyote problems. Mm-hmm. And something popped up in my YouTube feed about someone that kills coyotes for you. It's like, hey, I got a gun. Yeah. And you want me to kill some coyotes, I'll come over your house and just start shooting coyotes. And it had, like, bas- almost like fucking sniper elite things. It's weird mm-hmm. that I'm okay with it mm-hmm. being, well, obviously, I, I'm fine with it being a Nazi. If yeah. a coyote was a Nazi, <laughs> it could get shot, too. I don't know if they have that ability. <laughs> I don't think they have the hate in their heart, to tell you the truth about a coyote. <laughs> but they don't have the experience points yet to get the skill. They're Nazi. a mystical, spiritual animal to our natives. And But someone was, like, shooting coyotes, and I was disturbed by that, too. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. and they look like dogs. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a hard thing for me. Yeah. But sharks are... Like, even deer, you know. We I, have I wouldn't a, shoot a deer. We have a bad deer population. There was eight of here. them when I pulled into my yeah. house. Yeah. It's, it, it's incredibly unsafe for the deer and us with the amount of population that it is. So I completely understand Mm -hmm. hunting season around here. Yes. But it's still, you know, it irks me. I'm not a fan of deer dying. And people could, you know, say whatever we want about us. Us being hypocritical. We don't want to kill it, but we want to eat it. I get it. I'll own that. Yes. I I absolutely agree. I'm not going to tell you you're a bad person if you (laughs) go out hunting. No, Um, not at all. Trophy hunting, I'm not a fan. No, no. But making you feel this way for sharks. Uh Uh-huh. I feel like was pretty because you know yeah. if you're killing dolphins, if you're killing seals, you know a yeah. lot of people we just inherently team mammal. Yeah, where I guess so. Yeah, we don't care yeah. about that. Shoot a snake. I'm you not, look at the. I, I'm actively trying to catch a snake. Dead it's eyes. not going well. But yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, well, we'll get. What'd you get day. for snake bait? I'm using dog treats. That sounds like your problem right there. <laughs> Let's start by the dog treats attract dogs. <laughs> They did. The beagle almost climbed climbed into the snake (laughs) trap. That's neither here nor there. I thought the dog treats would attack or attract the mice, and the mice would get trapped in there. You're in for a long game. Mice are smarter than I thought. (laughs) They've really outdone me. They've kind of turned around the bucket where the snake trap is in, and they've been nibbling on the sides, and they've been getting the dog treats. Oh, my gosh. Also, do you know the mice can go up those stairs? Yeah. I sat here yesterday. I watched one just go boop, 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 boop. Oh, man. Dude. Oh, no. They're doing well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i gotta say you gotta keep that snake around all right going back to the document okay let's get back into it the real Sharks. answer is i gotta get a cat look at the beady eyes you know yeah and the the, the scary mouth of a shark and you're like that's Horrible. a terrifying predator also jaws is a big thing for everybody they talk it's about a that a lot of this. yes and, and it's like a lot that, of you're like sharks are very scary and, and they're going to hurt you i think they said in this that the guy that wrote uh jaws mm-hmm. whose name escapes me at the moment but he came out afterwards and was like, oh, I'm really sorry for writing this. Yeah. Like, I just wanted... Because sharks weren't really viewed as monsters until yeah. Jaws came out. I mean, it was a popular monster right there. Yeah. And uh, that's... They say like it was like fewer than a thousand people are uh, attacked by sharks or something like that. Less than that a year. Yeah. For sure. 760 a year or something like that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> let's look. And that is like a shocking statistic, you know? Because I thought at least uh, if uh, you knew what you were doing around a shark, you could be okay. But people just don't know. Ten-year average is 74 unprovoked bites a year. Wow. That's a really low number. That's almost 
a little bit more than one a week. Yeah. One a week. <laughs> Who's yeah. that lucky one? It's insane. And there's a lot of footage of people just swimming next to great mm-hmm. white sharks. The yeah. scariest looking creature I could ever imagine. Did I tell you about when I was in Florida with the sharks? No. I don't know if I said that. I don't know. If I didn't tell you, I didn't say it on the podcast. This is my only podcast. I might have zoned out while you're talking about it. <laughs> so there's a, a thing. I wanted to recommend this while I was in Florida. I wanted to watch. I watched another shark documentary too, but I wanted to recommend this one to you. Okay. But I was, uh, the kid and I were down there and for some reason, like sharks came up because obviously, you know, Florida. Florida. And uh, my brother-in-law was just like, oh no, you, there's an app where you can like see it's like a shark tracker and all the great whites that yeah. they've tagged and me being the liar that i am i was just like oh this time of year it's too hot for sharks down here they're all up north in like yeah massachusetts that's where you hear about them they don't stay down here with that time and i just pulled up the app and it's just like one was right off the coast <laughs> and i was just like oh no they are out here <laughs> they heard <laughs> <laughs> but uh going back to the documentary mm-hmm Eli Roth made a fantastic documentary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I love this. I thought you would like it for the horror angle, too. Uh-huh. And I knew it would tug on your little heartstrings. So. Because uh, I know you're a softie uh, for anything and suffering. And they made mm. this. It For me, before I get your feedback on the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. My sales pitch for this would be, it's a horror movie. It's a conspiracy movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a well-made documentary. It's globe-spanning. He goes to China. He goes to Liberia. He's down in like Australia and shit. Like he goes across the whole planet, oh, filming yeah. sharks. Yeah, there's there's action in it. There's intrigue. Mm-hmm. There's everything but romance. <laughs> and there's also just horrific. In yeah. your face gore, kind of like uh, the way they shot like Saving Private Ryan. It's, where like we're gonna fucking show it. It's like to uh, make an impact. A PETA video that they would show you to be yeah. like, look at how horrific. Yeah, you these see things like are. chickens without beaks and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, and, and like then that. you're scarred. You know. Yeah, and yeah, it does that a lot. The uh, dissection of a whale shark while it was still alive. Yes, that was horrifying. One of the most disturbing that. In particular, they, that's that's what honestly sealed it for me that I'm going to recommend it to you because I'm like, this is one of the most disturbing things I've it. ever seen. Why don't you kill it? That was horrible. Yes, because the whale shark is, it's widely known, not only is the biggest fish in the world, but it, it doesn't hurt people. It's, it, a, yeah. it's a filter feeder. Yeah. It's essentially a, a whale. Yeah. yeah. And they were just slicing it up with one like of those a loaf big, of bread. No, like one of those big lumberjack saws. Yeah. Like back and forth. But just like cutting off slices. And so, it was horrible so there was that aspect and i think i think the people that kind of uh for some reason came out looking better in this in my eyes Hmm. was the chinese because they still eat the soup and i've spoken with my dad lived in not in china but he did a lot of business over there uh in the 90s and stuff like that and i asked him i was like did you ever eat shark fin soup when you're over there yeah and he said it's it was offered to me but i never ate it yeah he said i and yeah. I think he said it was a texture thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they show the making of shark fin soup, if people don't know. And I'm curious. I was curious about that as a culinary thing, because if there's this dish that has such a cultural faux yeah. pas about it, mm. you know, it's got to be fucking delicious. Like that that's, the argument, be, pe- yeah, that's the argument. Yeah. That's the argument people make it. with like mm-hmm. foie gras, which is mm-hmm. a horrible mutilation of a goose. Yeah. To, you know, I'm never going to try foie gras. Yeah. I've had it. And I got to tell you, I get that it's really good, it's rich, it's decadent, but yeah. knowing where it comes from, it's one of those things I don't yeah. eat. Uh, but shark fin soup is apparently really shitty. Yeah. Like, they have to add a bunch yeah. of pork broth and other things to it. Yeah. So it's, it's literally just, just it's, it's the live animal equivalent of when you go to, like, a restaurant and, like, oh, this is an ice cream sundae that has a, a gold leaf yes. put on it. That's odorless, it's, exactly it's that. tasteless. Yeah. Except it's nothing cartilage. had to die yeah. for the gold mm-hmm. leaf. And they already said they have a synthetic... Uh, that's comparable better. yeah yeah plant-based yeah and so that's where the rabbit hole where you know you could say what you want it's a tradition it's you know I... they've been doing it for years and then it comes back it hasn't been a tradition for very long yeah it's one of those things like uh diamond wedding rings only started in the last hundred years yeah. because the people at De Beers wanted to sell more diamonds yeah these were shark fishermen and then the whole thing was they outlawed finning and everyone mm-hmm. thinks finning is the practice that you just chop their fins off and throw them back into yep. the ocean the whole body of the shark to just you know not be able yeah. to swim and essentially drown. And Don't worry, they die. have plenty of footage to show you if you watch the video. Yeah, fuck, watch right. the movie. It's a little heavy. Oh my gosh, it's horrible. But uh, <laughs> it's so horrible. Then it takes you down the rabbit hole of that. Now 
there's so many products that you buy that have shark fin in yeah. them, that have shark in them just because yeah. now they're thinking it's like, oh, we're not just using the fins, even though the fins are that. They're putting yeah. into like cosmetics they're and other using the shark liver. Which shark is liver the, oil in like, like largest organ inside of it. Yeah. So if you see like something with fish oil, unless it specifically says shark free, yeah. it probably has shark More in it. More than likely has shark in it. Because the way they're getting Skin around cream, sunscreen. Right. So the way they're getting around the finning laws, as Eli Roth points out is not by not killing shark, it's by killing sharks and putting sharks into things that it doesn't need Don't to be. Don't need sharks. Because they say, and I'm obviously not one of those people that's like vegan, like, oh, well, you could have this, it's plant-based, it's better, uh-huh. blah, 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 blah. But they have, like for a cosmetic, they're like, oh yeah, there's a plant-based supplement that's cheaper, yeah. easier to get, more renewable, but yeah. they're putting- it's sustainable. Yeah, they're putting yeah. sharks into products just so they could keep selling yeah. the fins. They're subsidized by the government, by the UN- yeah, and it's, to uh, fish sharks, and, and I, that's crazy because I, they're also advocating to stop uh, shark fishing. And another one of the things is that they're pushing the um, the myth of how terrifying sharks are mm-hmm. just to keep people on board with killing sharks. Yeah, it's insane because it's a billions and billions of dollar industry, huge money. Because it's uh, it's just unbelievable. You know, it's so upsetting and it's built by design to be upsetting and it's easy to do that i love you a lot because he's a horror movie director he I watched he, he sells he buys and trades and ups, upsetting i watched uh cabin fever uh when it was out on dvd at my uncle's and i hated it and i said that was the worst horror movie I've ever seen and then my uncle said it's not a horror movie it's a comedy and then i watched it again and i said that's one of the best movies i've ever seen huh it is so funny and so I was. I really like Hostel. I like Hostel Part Two, and uh, he really. I haven't seen Green Inferno. He kind of just fell off my radar for a while. That there was a big kerfuffle about that movie, right? I believe so. Yeah, it was, it was sort of like he tried to basically remake Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, essentially. he was doing a Cannibal Holocaust type thing. And gotta hate it when people do a Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> they always try it. Huh. So, um, I was excited to see something else from him. You know, and. You were right where there is, like, horror elements to this. One of the things is, like, you always up the ante with what's uh, disturbing. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts with the fenning, and you just, you see it so much that you start getting, like, okay. Not okay with it, but, like... Desensitized. Yeah, a little desensitized to it, and then they'll show you uh, something even worse. Yes. Like, they start with the uh, taking the whole thing part, and then they Mm -hmm. show you ones where they just take the fins off throw the live thing right back into the ocean and you watch that thing struggle for a while and you're like, that's horrible. And then they show you the whale shark and that's like the peak of the movie because it is so uh, horrifying I will to say, watch that thing yeah. that uh, after that, it's like you need a palate cleanser yeah. to get you down from like just how disturbed you are. And that's when they start hitting you with... Just the facts. The money and side of it. Yeah. The uh, They get you riled up, and they're the, like, you're angry now? Here's something to be even more angry My boy, about. Bob Barker, sending out a ship to start helping stopping fishing for sharks. And that's a thing I want to talk about, too. Bob Barker is wow. in this. Rest in peace. Dude, we did. That's I crazy. recommended it. I almost said last week, because yeah. when I watched this, and they said, you know, this came out in 2021, I said Bob Barker is one of the biggest, you know, animal rights supporters. Oh, hell yeah. And I was like, Bob Barker died, didn't he? I looked and I was like, no, Bob Barker's 99. Yeah. And I almost said last week, I'm going to feel really shitty if Bob Barker <laughs> dies. <laughs> and no, it was great timing. And it was good to know. Good bit. And also, 90, 99. Man. It's not yeah. like he was skydiving. That's the best like, thing. He was uh, closest to a dollar without going over. Oh. You haven't heard that joke yet? I know. It's a fantastic it's joke. It's a good joke. That is a fantastic joke. Yes. He would have loved it. Yeah. He did it on purpose. I love Bob Barker. Shout out Bob Barker. I, I love him and I love this boat. Like, that's where you start yeah. getting that stuff, where you start seeing the active uh, stopping of this practice. And those guys are pretty badass. It's amazing. Yeah. What's like, it called? The she- Sea Shepherd? <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Yeah. And they uh, made a fishing vessel 
sink itself yeah by just following it and being like you guys are doing stuff that's legal <laughs> and the horrifying thing about that too is not like obviously there are people that are wanting to do this that's where all the money's made but then yeah. they but have that's not the people, people that are boats. almost in, indentured servitude yes, they're indentured servants where it's like they fly them over from yeah, or your family dies yeah or guess what you're on this boat we took your passport you yeah. have no way of getting into any civilized country yep you're gonna do this until we say you're allowed yeah. to leave we are in uncharted waters yeah and nobody cares that you're here and no one on this boat speaks your language yeah it's because we pulled you from Bangladesh so and there are people from Thailand here. You can't be mad at the people pulling the sharks because they even have that part where the guy, uh, one of the fishermen is yelling at the camera people that are coming mm -hmm. through. And he's like, I have family. He has family. He has family. Yeah. You know, we're stopping. Uh, we have to feed our families. Yeah. And it's like, I feel for that guy. That really, really sucks. And that's another thing, too. Uh, one of the earlier scenes, one of the. I think most disturbing parts to me was Eli Roth is actually out on a boat with these fishers off the coast of Baja, California in Mexico. Yeah. And they like, pull up a shark and Eli's like, Oh, can we pay him for the shark? Yeah. So he would just let it go. Yeah. And the dude just takes an aluminum baseball bat and, and knocks it right on the head. Dude. Yeah. And then Eli's sitting in the boat while they're cutting it up. And he's just like, I, I don't like this. Yeah. And it's like, that dude, guy went to deep take, into it. To take yeah. a guy who storyboarded hostile. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he I, drew that that's out of his imagination mm -hmm. and to see when he sees I, a shark in real life he's like i don't like this yeah, at all i loved hostile i thought it was a great movie and this stuff is very disturbing to me yeah compared to hostile i love it I, the, the gore in that is so fun and funny mm -hmm. but this thing it, it th the lack of <laughs> humanity in this is very upsetting yeah you know and it's it was drained from these people. It wasn't yeah. something that they're bloodthirsty people. They were like, I have to do this. There are no there are no winners here. Yes, and it's the, I the think only that winners was, are faceless uh, corporations. corporations that don't give a shit. And this podcast is going to make me hate capitalism again. Mm, we got to beat them at their own game. <laughs> sea Shepherd, fucking Bob Barker, that <laughs> <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> but I will say it's. I think what he got at. Uh, as a documentarian, I think what he was going for, because I, I think there was just enough, uh, just speaking from a technical filmmaking perspective, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's his first time as a documentarian. Uh, I think he did a great job. I think there was him as a famous person making a documentary. Sometimes, like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. produces this environmental thing, and every Leonardo five minutes DiCaprio it's Leo in front of a green screen. Mm -hmm. saying about oh we got to do this for the fucking earth yeah i think there was just enough of eli roth in this and i think he had a little bit of that uh roadrunner anthony bourdain travel mentality shooting to it mm -hmm. where he put himself into the situations like yeah. when he's on that fucking boat off the coast it's of admirable Liberia, that he did that he's yeah. wearing a bulletproof vest and everything mm -hmm. and like at some point the guys are just like yeah you guys need to stay with yeah. him because if you disappear on this boat we're not finding you yeah and it's people disappear like, on those boats all the time. Yeah, one of the yeah. guys that was like a, a guy trying to shut down shark. It's like, oh, he's gone, and everyone's just like, we don't know what happened to yeah, him. He it's had a the heart ocean. attack, and then he fell into the ocean. Yeah, you know how that happens. A healthy man yeah. in his thirties has a heart attack and falls into the ocean. Where you couldn't see us or find us, he had a heart attack right then and, and, and fell into the ocean. Bummer. Yeah. So yeah, how would you uh, rate this documentary on our scale? It's hard. It's yeah. hard to say because these types of documentaries anger up blood. Just mm -hmm. like a big short situation, yes. Where I'm just so pissed off that it's caught to this snowball, yeah. And it's really hard to see how we're going to get out of something like this for something that is so fucking pointless. Yes, yeah. And it's just because people want to make money, and mm -hmm. like that's that's evil. Period. Yeah. Having it brought to our attention is uh, good. Mm -hmm. You know. It's it, it makes me feel more worldly, and uh, having an ending where he's like, "These are the things that people are trying," and he's like, "It's not enough, but we're trying." Yeah. And having it end in Massachusetts with those those people. Oh, we didn't even talk about those people. Yeah. So the the they have them up in Massachusetts, and it was uh, the other documentary I watched was uh, about Massachusetts as well. It's called it's on Max too. It's yeah. called After the Bite, mm -hmm. and it's about uh, shark attacks, and kind of takes a different argument that. I kind of fell for it a little bit before I watched this because it was uh, people saying that the shark bites are because they're not letting them fish and kill seals and stuff. So now the seals are overpopulated and it was just basically anytime humans disrupt the ecos, it's the fucking, it's the rabbits and canes toads in Australia. Like whenever mm -hmm. we fuck, mm -hmm. it's the Burmese pythons in my fucking Everglades down in Florida. <laughs> whenever we mess with nature, 
things mm-hmm. go crazy. Yeah. So they're saying, we're not allowed to kill any seals. So the mm-hmm. seals are overpopulated. Now the sharks are here. The seals uh-huh. are around humans, and now the sharks are around humans. Uh-huh. So now and we're And I was just bites. like, that makes sense. Yeah. But these people in Finn, not mm-hmm. in After the Bite, mm-hmm. uh, in Finn were just being like, oh, yeah, the sharks are around people. That's why we have this shark fishing tournament. And yeah. it's just some dickhead. Yeah. And they're going like, like we're doing this for science. In front of kids, like fucking yeah. cutting open a shark. Uh-huh. And it, 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 like going up to the kids and being like, Hey, do you yeah. want to come see this? And I'm like, you should be in fucking jail for child he's abuse. Finning them right yes. in front of them, and they're and like, like, "Oh, well, no, how this is, is different is... from finning." And he's like, "Oh, this isn't finning. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna take this and we're gonna do uh, something with compost it. it. Oh, this you want to you want a steak for this? Like, yeah. he asked him, he's like, yeah, oh, you guys want steaks? Yeah. It's like you're not fucking eating that shark. Yeah. You just wanted to be a dude that caught a shark, and it's a thing with people. I swear to God, where they hear that sharks are the top of the food chain. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I have to so go kill it. I have to go kill it. Yeah. It's like uh, uh, lions are the king of the jungle. Yeah. So I'm going to go out there and use a gun to kill it. And that makes me awesome. All of our new TikTok fans are going to think we're fucking liberals. Go back to listen to some of the other episodes that no. we're, we're cool on. <laughs> <laughs> we're, go, listen, go back to April to All Affleck. We're Affle- complicated Affle- individuals. Go listen to All Affleck April. I'm a, I'm a far more bleeding heart than you are. You are. That's our good yeah. little repartee. Yeah, that's a great repartee. So three, three. Three, I'll say. It's three. I think, I think this is important for it's, people to watch. I think, I think it's important to watch. I think it is a hard recommendation. But if you are very, if you're interested in understanding uh, uh, the ocean ecosystem, this is a really good way to start. The numbers are almost Staggering. unbelievable. 100 million sharks they a year? Have, they feel so unbelievable. Yeah. And then they show you the shops. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of shark fins. They have shots of uh, buildings, like hotel roofs that are just covered in shark fins. Yeah. It's amazing. For something that doesn't taste good. It's just a status symbol. It doesn't taste good. Yeah, it doesn't taste like anything. Oh, and it's got the director of Ricky O in it, so that really propelled propelled it into uh, three territory. Yeah. Because that guy was awesome. Because he's like... Because that's when Eli Roth actually tried shark fin yeah. soup, mm-hmm. and he was like, "It doesn't taste like anything." The Hong Kong director, and then yeah. the Ricky O director says, "Yeah, it's a stupid food." <laughs> I was like, "Hell yeah, he of was, course he's cool." Was kind of optimistic when he was in Hong Kong, and like the younger guy, his translator, mm-hmm. he's like in his thirties, he's a millennial like us. Um, I mean, for the TikTok algorithm, we're in our early twenties, and we're I'm just a cool little kid, youthful. I like to skateboard. TikTokers doing dances. I like to watch Skibbity Toilet. What's this? You're making things up. Now. Nope. I am with the children. Me and the youth are going to go out later and try and score some beer. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, fun. Oh, yeah. No, we're two guys in our 30s that'll talk about the same video games for too long. That's very true. <laughs> I just found out on the Wikipedia, Eli Roth directed uh, one movie that I watched with my kid called The House with a Clock in Its Walls. I hear it's really good. It is. That's fantastic. Uh, Jack Black and Kate Blanchett, two people that do good things. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, uh, Finn is available on Max. I think you should watch it. And even if you're not super interested in the uh, marine conservation aspect of it, I think it's just, it's something that you should know. And I don't think it's something you can unknow. Yeah. There's really good information in there, to say the least. It does tell you things you could buy, like certain labels to look for, like things that say shark free. Because they're trying to put shark in anything so they could keep selling the fins to check. They have different names of fish. Mm-hmm. That are actually shark meat. Yeah, it said it could be wow. like it could be in your tilapia, it could be in your fish sticks because yeah. it's just bulk shark meat that they put into stuff. <laughs> so crazy. So try, try. Uh, we leave, probably ate shark. Leave sharks alone. Yeah, I don't. I only eat cow <laughs> <laughs> and chicken and piggies. Um. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into uh, Jake's recommendation for me. Hell yeah! Which is the ongoing. It's uh, currently in its third season. It's about yeah. to wrap up its third and I think final season. Yes. Uh, another documentary, uh, How to with John Wilson. Yes, sir. This started in 2020 on Max, and like I said, it's in its third season right now. Uh, every season's just six episodes. At least the first two are. I'm assuming the second or third one will be as well. I suppose so. Uh, Jake, how'd you find out about this and? Uh, why'd you recommend it? I love uh, Nathan Fielder. Yes. I think he's an amazing creator. And if you don't know, uh, Nathan Fielder did Nathan for You on mm-hmm. Comedy Central. And recently he did the rehearsal on HBO. Yeah. Did you watch that one? Yes. Did we talk about that? No, I don't think so. I almost recommended that to you. I watched the first one. Oh, I have one. already watched it. It's, I figured. It's wonderful. Yeah. When that came out, I watched it and it was like, that's fucking good. But, cool. but uh, I had no idea about this. So there was a, uh, a YouTube video that Nathan did talking about the making of 
uh, How To with John Wilson, Mm -hmm. and it was specifically about getting that shot of bread uh, hung up on the subway in a plastic bag. Yes. And he's like, just capturing things like that is just the craziest thing. He's like, but I also want people to know about my Twitch house that I have going on with these young boys. And he just goes on this big rant about how he's got all these kids that live with him in this big house. And is, he's trying to get permission from his parents so that they can sleep over. And it just keeps going on and on. I was like, so I gotta watch this. So I did, and it's very awkward. And yes. I love how John... Wilson will he just like records his everyday life and it just finds a way to turn it into a story and I thought that was fun and when I watched all the way up I think it just got better and better and better and I think on this third season I think it's amazing and that's when I was like I want to talk to this I want to talk about this to Taylor so I was like here you go. So I'm not up to the third season yet. I say yet because I really enjoyed this. This is a three for me. Hell yeah. Like, y- you knew this easy one. three. You knew this one was an easy three. Yeah. You said it last week. So uh, John Wilson, it, like I think you put that really well, where he just films a lot and then he cobbles together an episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're short little episodes. They're like 22 minutes. Yeah. Like, they're all under 30 minutes, all the ones that I've seen. I've seen uh, most of season one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh the episode titles, you know, for season one, it's how to make small talk, how to put up scaffolding, how yeah. to improve your memory, and how to cover your furniture. Those are the ones I watch. Yeah. I'm halfway through uh, how to split the check, which is episode five. Okay. That's uh, a really good one. All the video of people working on how the check works, all the yes. <laughs> stuff that caught, it's so wonderful. So he does... he. The guy's based in New York, so a lot of it is just man on the street recording that he can cobble together, like the episode about scaffolding, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is a great show because it's it's bite-sized documentaries, which I think is hard to do. Mm-hmm. Like, there are some people that do it really well on YouTube that'll have, like, you know, a little short form. I think Vice kind of started that modern movement of, like, here's, oh, yeah. here's like, a 40-minute documentary about something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Back when Vice was Vice News, when it actually had like a point of view, and you know it wasn't just insanity. It was like edgy news that you. Yeah, and then that guy, Daddy, that guy kind of founded the Proud Boys. Uh, Gavin McGinnis, the co-founder of Vice, whatever the fuck, is a dipshit. (laughs) (laughs) The guy that created the antivirus software was like doing hookers and. That's a great guy right there, McAfee. <laughs> McAfee, yeah. He made so much money. He's and doing then he drugs was and like, getting hookers to poop drugs. on him through a hammock. Yeah. <laughs> that guy, it, Regardless. I hope I go out that way. Regardless. Yes. We're Americans. We shouldn't be saying how great founders are. Because <laughs> we have some skeletons in that closet, too. So, uh, yeah, I think it's great little documentaries. And yeah. he's got a very distinct sense of humor. This is one of those things, uh, a documentary or not a, doc- a recommendation falls in the category of some of our other ones where it's like, if this isn't for you, I get it. Yeah. It's not mm-hmm. for everyone. It's very, uh, the comedic voice, obviously Nathan Fielder, huge influence on this. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. but the very other comedic dry. voice that came up mm-hmm. to my mind, uh, for stand up comedy, cause that's just how I relate most people. It's uh, Dimitri Martin. Yeah. Just very. Okay. Good jokes, visual jokes, because is, as a documentarian, it's not like he's like you know cracking up and doing yuck yuck jokes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But like he said, with like the uh, bread in the subway, mm-hmm. sometimes there's just visual gags. Yeah, with the narration, that's just hilarious. Yeah, just really good uh, payoff. And it's not something, something you have to invest a lot of time into. Like yeah. it's something you can watch on your phone on your lunch break or anything like that. Yeah. And it's just you know quick little twenty minute, twenty two minute things, and it's just great. I think my favorite. <laughs> episode was uh episode three and granted this is out of four i like them all yeah was uh the episode how to improve your memory where yeah. he starts out showing that he has journals and i think yeah it's not incredible trying to, i'm not trying to diagnose the man but he's got ocd adhd something but that's he, an amazing he's collection of he's thoughts. somewhere on some kind of spectrum <laughs> and he has uh journals and journals filled with everything that he's eaten and it could be a bit he could have just made all of those for the documentary that's an insane bit this is that is this also that's falls like into seven your, uh with the notebooks type yeah. of thing this also falls into the category of things where I'm not sure how real it is. Yes. Uh, kind of like, uh, what is it, Wrestling with Shadows, the uh-huh. Hitman Heart that we did the episode on and stuff like that. But I think it doesn't matter with this. Mm-hmm. 
the way the setup is there and then he's really good as a documentarian of giving people enough rope while he's talking because it starts out with him trying to improve his memory and mm. he starts talking to this guy who goes off about the Mandela effect. Yes. Which is how people remember things different in history. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Berenstain Bears versus Berenstain Bears. Some yeah. people say Nelson Mandela What died was the in objects in the mirror thing? Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. But he says when we were kids, it says objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear. May? Maybe. Maybe. If, yes, they are. It's a convex... A mirror so that I, you can see around. We're getting bogged down. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sorry. It's but anyway, just, this, I didn't understand what the Mandela effect was on that one. They're saying that it used to read something different. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, uh, he just let that guy talk. And then he ends up at a conference in like <laughs> fucking Indiana <laughs> yeah. for Mandela effect. And it's like, how he just follows these things is fantastic. It's the whole thing. Like he starts talking about scaffolding and he ends up in New Orleans at a scaffolding convention. Yeah. And he just, it's just one of those things where I think, uh, and obviously this is all I've seen of John Wilson, but I kind of just pick it up his vibe and especially Nathan for you and, uh, the rehearsal with Nathan Fielder really just, it, 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 it keeps going and follows it. So it's like, let's see how far we could push this mm-hmm. before it starts pushing back against us. And then like someone starts talking to him about the Mandela effect. Most people are like, okay, yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. I'll but see he's you. like. Tell me more about this. Yeah. I want to know everything. There's a mm-hmm. conference. I'm going. The way that he does these things, because he's talking to some people, and then their uh, fire alarm starts beeping, uh-huh. and he just goes like, what's that? And you're like, oh, that's the fire alarm. The battery's dying. He's like, do you want me to fix it for you? <laughs> it's this weird thing of, uh, how's, what's the best way to phrase it? It's <laughs> being incredibly outgoing. While yeah. being incredibly socially awkward, yeah. I think that's where the humor comes that, from. Yeah, He's, where it's like a socially awkward person, which is how he comes across in his narration, and mm-hmm. he, his vocal, his, his cadence is like, no, 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 yeah, and then you go. Sometimes when you're in New York. You'll, you'll take the subway. Yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds like he's, you know, making it up as he, it yes. sounds like a kid doing a book report on a book he hasn't read. Yes. And that's very funny. Good but point. the fact that it's that person with that mentality or mm-hmm. not, I wouldn't say mentality that pre, uh, presenting that way. Yeah. Uh, with the narration in the subject matter following, because a person who acts like that, you wouldn't think would go to Indiana to a Mandela effect or go to new Orleans to a scaffolding convention. Doubling down. Right. On this, this is a, comedy line that i need to follow or talk to people about uh covering up plastic furniture yeah and the art Getting behind that and how there are businesses in new york that custom make yeah plastic furniture covers like my nana used to have yeah and he's like um just oh shit i lost my train of thought yeah he but, was it's something that he wanted to buy a nice chair yeah. but he didn't want his cat to attack it, it. yeah yeah because his cat does that all the time. So it ends with him buying or uh, paying someone to make a replica chair yeah. so his cat can tear up one <laughs> while his chair that he bought for himself is storage. covered in storage. Because <laughs> he heard from someone that's what painters do. Yeah. Or not painters, but art collectors Arts, do. Yeah. And it's just one of those things. It's awesome. a great thing. And it's nice that they're not all in order because you could just kind of jump around with it. And then just looking at the rest of them, it's uh, things yeah. I want to watch this. It's like one of them just says how to find a spot. Yeah, and I'm like, find a parking spot. Yeah, uh-huh. and then there's like how to invest in real estate, how to throw out your batteries, mm-hmm. how to be spontaneous. The fact that you're telling someone there's, I know there's a 20 minute documentary out there of this guy explaining how to be spontaneous, which in itself is a self defeating yeah thing to do because you can't plan to be spontaneous <laughs> is so the one, fucking great. I can't wait to watch more of it. The I'm one stoked. that's stuck in my head is the how to get rid of your batteries. Yeah, because he I finds watch that too. He wants he found on craigslist somebody selling antique batteries he goes to take a what? look at them and he's like where did you get these antique batteries and she's like it's from my husband well my ex-husband and it, it's like really weird vibes yes. now, right and i love that. it and i love that yeah i love that they're not connected i love that it's 20 minutes mm-hmm. this is like my favorite thing i could see myself re-watching these I gre- i'm guessing at the well yeah it says uh episode you'll see that there's an underlying oh, story it's a uh, friday uh, Have you September met my first. mom? Have you met my mom yet? Yeah. So you know my mom? Yeah. Oh, there's a story with my mom. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an underlying story. Oh, I thought you meant your mom. Like, have I met your mom? No. I was like, are you okay? There's a, yes. There's I've a met- lady in there called Mama. 
Oh, is that it's his the, his landlord? Oh, okay. Apparently, her... she comes up in the How to Cook Risotto the okay, season. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, um, the last episode will air when this comes out, uh, September first. Cool. On Max, that'll be the final episode, which is How to Track Your Package. Ooh, cool. Yeah, I'm excited. But yeah, 100. percent I recommend uh, How to with John Wilson. Oh, and absolutely. Throw out the caveat: if it's not for you, I get it. Yeah, boy, it's not for everybody. But I, I, I love it. This is so like the show says. It's so far up my alley. I needed like, one to knock it out of the park. You did a couple threes. Couple, I got one. I had a couple of this under my sleeve. Good I knew it was coming. Double docks, double threes. Double threes. All Look right. At us go. So, uh, thank oh, you all shucks. for listening. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, you got to look. No, you keep going. Thing. No. Okay. Thank People you all uh, for need listening. need to know the behind the scenes. Okay. You want to see how the sausage is made? <laughs> they probably do. Uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and threads and TikTok, Spotify, YouTube, all that stuff. Uh, we're, I just found out I can do stuff with Twitch. I think Jake and I are going to do some Twitch stuff, too. Oh, you want me to Twitch, too? Yeah, we'll be, we'll be twitching all over this place. Man. Okay. Um, but when I get that up and running, I'll have more info on that later. Uh, if you have your recommendations uh, that you think we would watch, we have done some listener stuff in the past. Uh, you can email us, upyourallypod at gmail.com, with your own recommendations. We'd love to hear from you. And, uh, yeah, go to the YouTube channel. We're putting up clips and stuff there. And you could also, if you like YouTube... Uh, to listen to your podcast, it's up there as well. So let's get into what we're going to be getting into for next week. Jake, what do you All have right. for me? So I want you to go on www.youtube.com. You're going to find a creator named We're in Hell. We are in hell, but is we are is contracted. We're in hell. Like we're in hell. Yes, we are in hell. And he's got an episode called... What White Noise Tells Us About the Mona Lisa. Is this a documentary? It's almost a documentary. It's a conversation about art. Really? Yes. Okay. Oh, God, it's going to start playing. Shut up! What White Noise Tells Us About the Mona Lisa came out two months ago. We're in hell. You uh, didn't hear nothing. I heard vague, jangly music. <laughs> okay, so uh, We're in Hell, We're W-E-R-E-I-N-H-E-L-L. Uh, what white, uh, you could also just type in What White Noise Tells Us About the Mona Lisa. That'll pop up. Uh-huh. Uh, looks like a one-hour little shindig. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun. Uh, I look uh, forward to this because it's going to be a good conversation about art. Good. And we haven't had one of those in a bit. I have a piece of art for you to watch. Yay! Yeah. Uh, this is also on Max. Uh-huh. You thought you could run away from this. Oh, my God. But no. you couldn't run away from oh, it. Oh, no. You know why you couldn't run away from it? Why? Because it's about the fastest man alive. You're watching The Flash. Oh, the movie? It's on Max. Oh, my God. Yep. I oh, you big jerk. <laughs> I, I couldn't make you see it in theaters. Oh. But, Jake, I need to talk to you about The oh Flash. Oh, my gosh. I don't like Ezra Miller. <laughs> I don't care. I do not care. Oh, boy. This is your punishment for making me watch FLCL. Wow. Yes. I shouldn't do stuff like that. <laughs> Jake, I want to talk to you about The Flash. I've got Damn some it. I've got some points to spare. Yeah. I okay, want you I to watch The Flash. The Flash, if you wow. don't know, it's a twenty twenty three oh. film starring Ezra Miller as Barry Allen, also reprising his roles Damn uh, it. Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne. Yeah, that's true. And Ben mm-hmm. Affleck as Bruce Wayne. <laughs> There's no other. There's of course there's other Flash because there's literally other people buddy, that are Flash. Buddy, there are people in this movie that should not be in this movie. I am so very upset. <laughs> you should be. Gosh. But guess what? I want to talk to you about the Flash. Son so of that's a what we're gonna do. B. <laughs> All right. Wow. So uh, white. What white noise tells us about the Mona Lisa and the Flash <laughs> yeah. is gonna be next this week's is episode. It's gonna be such a whiplash when I, we talk about this next week. I don't care. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Me too, man. All right. Well, thanks for coming over, everybody. Thank you for listening. Send us your emails to upyourallypod at gmail.com. Follow us on all that nonsense. Jake, thanks for coming over. I love you, buddy. <laughs> I love you too, bud. Bye.